Matthew Stuckey here from Verity Baptist Church Philippines, just giving you a, a quick yearly missionary update. Actually, this will probably be longer than my normal missionary updates because I'm going to update you on basically the whole year and our different ministries and where we're going headed forward. And so as, as our ministries combined this in 2021, we had a total of 9,160 salvations. So it's been a great year, lots of salvations. And uh, that amount has gone up and down depending on, you know, basically the level of strictness of COVID and rules and things such as that. Recently, things have been going awesome because we've broken our salvation. We just broke our salvation record for a week this past week, actually. And so things have been going great. Our attendances have been going great. Uh, things have been definitely packed at our churches and everything. We've set attendance records a couple times over these past couple months. So things are just going great. They're basically at their peak right now, honestly. Although over the last 24 hours, there are a lot of new COVID rules as a result of Omicron. And so it's actually gonna make it pretty difficult going forward. And I'll talk about that later on in the video. But over these last couple months, you know, at the end of the year, we just kind of hit it really hard and did a great job and things have just been going really great. And so 9,160 salvations, that is really a team effort. It is not just one person or two people or three people. It's really been a lot of people that have volunteered their time to go soul winning. I mean, out of that 9,160, I don't have my exact total in front of me, but I definitely have a small percentage of that. We just have a lot of people doing the work. At our church in Manila, we ended with 7,185 salvations. Obviously, that's the, the bulk of our salvations. And you know that's the church that we started over three years ago. We have services on Sundays and Wednesdays. We pretty much have a soul winning marathon every single non-working holiday. And so we also have all day soul winning on Saturdays. A lot of people contribute. And we did have some months where um, our totals were more difficult because the rules were very strict. And then recently though, they've really been picking up, but we ended with 7,185 salvations. As I said, our attendances have been you know, going up quite a bit. Our top two attendances we've ever had have been over these last um, you know, six, six weeks. And the weeks that, um, the other weeks were really high as well. So things have been going great. Our church in Pampanga, 790 salvations. This past week, we broke our record for salvations in a week. We had 52. And so things are going well there. We've had great salvations these last couple months. They've definitely been increased. Things were difficult for a while with the various rules and things such as that, but now things have loosened up, although they might be headed toward a more strict time period again. But overall, you know, our tenses have gone up. They've been very good recently. Our salvations have been up, so things have been going really well. And that's, of course, the church that we started a couple years ago. And so then we also have our Beagle Bible Study Fellowship. So I wanna talk about this one real quickly. Our salvations for the year were 597 salvations. This is a ministry that we started during the year. It wasn't around at the very beginning of the year. And it basically started because there was a lot of zealous people in Beagle going soul winning. So we basically, basically kind of sponsored some soul winning events there. And you know, unfortunately, they didn't have a great church to be a part of. And so we just kind of figured, well, let's have them just meet together and listen to good preaching and basically will be underneath the wing of Verity Baptist Church Philippines. And they've been doing a great job and they've seen some good attendances, had great soul winning and stuff like that. It's definitely a ministry we're looking to take to the next level in 2022. We're actually right now searching uh, for a different church building to be in a more central and key location. So we're trying to be patient for the right fit, but they're doing a great job down there in Beacle. So continue to pray for that ministry. Um, the, the most recent one we have is our Hong Kong Bible Study Fellowship. And so it's, it's similar in the fact that, um, you know, there was no great church for the soul winners there to be a part of. And, you know, we've met a lot of people from Hong Kong that are like-minded through these last three years. We've had, you know, several people that have joined for missions trips, and some of them have since uh, moved out of Hong Kong uh, to the Philippines or to the U.S., to England, to various different countries. But uh, there's still a good group there, and uh, basically because of their beliefs and their attachment to the new IFB and anti-repentance, um, they're basically not welcomed at churches. And if you're listening to this from the United States, you might think, well, you know, at least there's a good church to go to that's nearby, like a decent church. But that's not necessarily the case in a lot of other countries. You know, it may be the case in the United States, but in Asian countries, that's not necessarily the case. So we're just trying to help motivate these people. And honestly, they're the ones that are doing the work. We're just kind of sending them su supplies from time to time. And there's a bunch of zealous soul winning ladies that get together and they've been doing a great job. 
been very zealous with their soul winning. And so we started that recently and, you know, just continue to pray for that ministry and uh, encourage them if you can. And hopefully um, they'll still be able to freely preach the gospel, that the country itself will not be too strict with rules. The other Bible study fellowship we've had, which has been for longer, is the Singapore Bible study fellowship. Very similar to Hong Kong in the fact that, you know, couldn't find a great church and that's just a very common thing in Asian countries where Christianity is not the predominant religion. It's really only the Philippines where Christianity is a predominant religion. And so they ended with 463 salvations. And honestly, they were getting a lot of people saved toward, I think, the beginning of the year. But Singapore has become an extremely strict country uh, when it comes to COVID rules. And honestly, the ability to preach the gospel has just been incredibly difficult. They just haven't been able to go out as much or meet together and things such as that. But you know what? I'm really encouraged by people that are in difficult situations that are still doing the work. So be in prayer for that ministry. Be in prayer for that country that they will loosen restrictions. Obviously, we want to see people get saved all over the world. And you know, you might live in an area where you can freely preach the gospel. But honestly, it's not like that everywhere in the world. So we want to encourage people that are in those situations. So between those, the, all those churches and ministries, we had a total of 9,160 salvations. And just to kind of give you a heads up, what I mean by a Bible study fellowship is basically there are areas where we, we're not necessarily at a point to officially start a church or things are more in transition, but there's enough people that are there that don't have a good church that basically we want to try to motivate them and do everything we can to help encourage them with their soul winning. If a great church were to start there tomorrow, then we would just encourage them to join that church. But with a lot of these locations, that's not necessarily the case. And so that's what we mean by a Bible study fellowship, where they don't necessarily have a church that they can go to, but we don't want to just kind of leave them hanging. We want to try to encourage them. So between all those ministries, we had a total of 9,160 salvations. So Things have been going really well. Our attendances have been great, as I've mentioned. Uh, currently on in Pampanga on Tuesdays, we've been going through the book of Genesis, and so we're about a third of the way uh, through Genesis right now. And uh, we, we have our false philosophy series that we're preaching on weekends, and we're also going through the book of Psalms. As, our, as um, a ministry of our churches, one of the, the things that we focus on is Bible memorization. And so... Basically, we're in chapters 23 through 41 of Psalms right now, and if you quote a chapter perfectly, you get a prize of candy or chips. We've had a lot of people memorizing chapters. Things are going great there. We have our New Testament Bible reading challenge right now in January, where we're encouraging people to read through the entire New Testament in the month of January. We gave them charts. We're trying to encourage one another and things such as that. So overall, things have been going great, but honestly, 24 hours ago, a lot has changed since 24 hours ago. So when we came back from church, um, you know, on Sunday night, all of a sudden we noticed all these cars that were lined up and they had all these officers outside in uh, Pampanga and they were stopping people and they were, they were saying, hey, just to let you know, uh, starting tomorrow, um, you must have a vaccine card to... Um, enter or exit, you know, Anjale City. Now, at this time, I don't know exactly fully what that means, whether or not they're going to be incredibly strict with this or not. Obviously, you know, with our ministries, we have people that travel to our churches. And when it comes to our churches and our ministries, we do have some people that have chosen to be vaccinated, and we do, do have some people that have chosen not to be vaccinated. Obviously, that's a free will choice that people make, and people have uh, strong opinions on various sides. And it, but it is something that is going to affect our church and our ministries. And then um, either last night or this morning, it just came on the news that in Metro Manila, uh, they put out a new mandate that if you do not have a vaccine, then you are not allowed to leave your house. And they are going to be checking to see whether or not you have a vaccine card, and they have checkpoints set up all around Metro Manila. Now, of course, this is new, so I don't know how many checkpoints there's, they're going to be, how strict they're going to be with it, whether or not um, you know some people might live very close to their job, so maybe it won't affect them. But we do have some members that have chosen not to be vaccinated, and it might very much affect them. And so... Obviously, that's a controversial topic. People have different opinions, but it is something that's going to um, affect us. It's going to affect our soul winning. It's probably going to result in less people being at parks 
and uh, more concerns being out and about. And so it looks like we're headed toward a difficult time again where there's a lot of difficult decisions to make with various things. And so just be in prayer for us about that. Um, we've gone through this several times. I know that around the world people have gone through various levels of strictness and things such as that. So we're not the only ones, but um, things have been going great. We just set a record for salvations. Uh, we just had great attendances. We've been setting uh, attendance records. Things have been going awesome. And then this, this just kind of hit out of nowhere. And so I quickly looked online with coronavirus cases and due to Om Omicron, the, the cases have been skyrocketing, whereas before they were very small. And so there's a lot of fear by the government and we're not sure all the rules that they're gonna make. And in the past, they put a lot of restrictions on churches. I don't know if they're gonna do that moving forward. It's all really kind of up in the air. This is brand new to me. But that is our yearly missionary update. And so we did have over 9,000 salvations. And, you know, honestly, we wouldn't have been able to do it without the support of um, our online listeners. Many people have donated to us. You've prayed for us. And we've had a lot of difficult situations to deal with. And those prayers are very important and helpful for us. We ask you to continue to pray for us and uh, be involved in our ministry as, as best you can. And honestly, the prayers mean quite a lot. Or even just send us an email to encourage us. I always love reading those emails. It's always an encouragement when I know that you know our church and what we're doing here is helping encourage other people and we can help edify one another. So anyways, thank you and God bless.